Heavenly Father, we thank you. Thank you for this day and for this opportunity that you have given us to live, to declare that Jesus Christ is Lord. Thank you for seeing us through the past seven months of the year 2020 and for bringing us to this last Sunday and bringing us into your presence to worship you. We give all the glory. Father, we pray that even as we go briefly through your word, we go into your word, we ask you, Holy Spirit, take over. You are the teacher. You are the great uh, instructor. We ask you, O oh God, to set your servant aside or use him as a tool and minister to your people and let Jesus be glorified. Even as people hear your voice all over the globe, in Jesus' mighty name, amen. 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 I need thee, oh, I need thee. Every I need thee. Oh, bless me now, my Savior. I come I'm to thee. Oh, I need you, I need you. I need you. Yeah. I need you. Oh, bless me now, my Savior. I come to today. Hallelujah. Amen. Such a sight in that there is no other place for us. But there is only one place that is in God. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. And he said, when you call on me, I will answer you. Even in trouble, when I will be with you in the trouble. And I'll take you through. And then I will give you the victory. Amen. Amen. So we want to thank God that in the midst of all the challenges, whether coronavirus or not, we are victorious, more than conqueror. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. And I want to encourage you not to give up in the race. You've started it, and the God who called you and created you and has been with you all this while, he will not leave you, he will not abandon you. Amen. Don't abandon the race. Let's continue. Let's look up to Jesus and continue to the end. For there is a crown. Amen. Winners don't what? They don't quit. And quitters don't win. Amen. Turn with me your Bibles to the book of Genesis chapter number 3. Genesis, the book of Genesis. Chapter number 3. Verse 9. And the Lord called unto Adam and said unto him, Where art thou? And he said, verse 10, I heard thy voice in the garden, and I was afraid because I was naked and I hid myself. Praise the Lord. And I'm talking briefly on the topic, where are you? And I wanted to shake the next person by you. Where are you? For God to ask a Christian, where are you? It means you are missing. If I may ask, where are you right now? It means there's something I miss. I'm looking for something that I'm not finding. Amen. So where are you? Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. You know, the moment a man is out of communion with God, even the professed child of God, he wants to hide away from him. Hallelujah. There are many, many times when they, they, they sin, they do stuff, stupid stuff. They start running away, hiding away from God. You don't see them even in church in meetings because then they get scared. Hallelujah. Sometimes they will stay away for two weeks, one month, Thinking that, oh, yeah, by that time, everything is down. The pastor didn't see. The pastor will not see. 
Don't deceive yourself. Amen. If the pastor don't see, God sees. Hallelujah. And every time God who sees all things, he will always reveal things when it continues. Amen. So don't kid yourself. Don't think that you do something that nobody sees. By and by it will come out. Hallelujah. Amen. Because people of God are praying for you, and so anything good about you, it has to be revealed. Anything negative about you, it will come out. So don't think that things go on, nobody will see it. No. If you are not confronted, don't think that nobody saw it. We pray that you have repentance. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. So every time man is out of God's plan, that's what they do. People run away. Adam did the same thing. Hallelujah. He had to run. After he what? He rebelled and disobeyed God's instruction not to specifically do something that he commanded him not to do. Praise the Lord. In the book of Genesis chapter 1, verse number 26, it says, And God said, Let us make man in our image after our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, and over the cattle, and over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. In Genesis chapter 2, verse number 15 to 17. And the Lord God took the man and put him in the garden of Eden to dress it and keep it. And the Lord commanded the man, saying, Of every tree of the garden thou mayest freely eat, but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil thou shalt not eat of it. For in the day that thou eatest, Thou mayest uh, uh, eat us that thereof, thou shalt surely die. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And so, you see from the reason that from God made an extension of himself on earth. Hallelujah. When he said, let us make man in our image, after our likeness, God made an extension of, of himself on earth. And put man in a position of authority and management over all that he has made. Praise the Lord. God gave man the authority over everything to manage. The first management, management uh, uh, course in the Bible. Amen. Manage everything. The only exception was that the tree of knowledge and of life. Should not be touched. Period. Simple instruction. You have authority over all. But there is only one thing. Don't touch it. Hallelujah. And sometimes people think that, well, because we are free, Christian, born again, believers, and we are free, God has given us freedom, we can do whatever. No, not everything is what is permitted. Praise the Lord. Not everything as a believer is permitted for you to do. The fact that God has bought the liberty for us, giving the liberty, that will give you what? The liberty to do what? Everything or whatever you like. There is always a restriction. There is a limitation. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. So God gave a simple instruction. Do not. The day you do so, you will die. And you know what happened. In the book of Genesis chapter 3, there was a discourse. Something happened. Something took place in the garden. Satan, he came. Let's see verse 1. He came in softly and said unto the woman, you, ha, has God said? You know what? You see what the devil does. Every time he will twist something. Twist the question or twist the situation to, to confuse you so that he can get you. Amen. Has God said that you should not eat of anything here? I believe, no, Satan has been with, with God. So he was uh, uh, actually privy to some of the things that God did or some of the things that he, God was saying. The instructions that you were giving man, he was privy to some of them. That's why he could actually know that no, God has said that they shouldn't do this. So he said, has God said you should not eat this? Amen. And the woman said unto the serpent, 
we may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God said, ye shall not eat of it. Neither shall ye touch it, lest ye die. And the serpent said of the woman, ye shall not surely die. No, God is not telling the truth. You will not die. You will be like him. Hallelujah. Your eyes will be open and become like God. So that's not true. That's a lie. From God. A man bought into that. See, when you have given your daughter or your son instruction not to do certain things, another person come from behind to what? Give a counter instruction or give a, a ask the person, try to change the person's mind to go against your instruction. How will you feel? You feel bad. Is that it? Hallelujah. Amen. But this is what Satan did to deceive mankind. So we see that Satan succeeded in what? Getting Adam and Eve to, dis what? to disobey God's instructions. To go against God's simple, explicit, explicit instruction that was given. They went against it. But every time we go against God's instruction, every time we break God's law, every time we go against words that he has given us, instructions that he has given, words in the Bible, which God has commanded or instructed us, it comes with what? With a consequence. Hallelujah. And that's what we don't realize. The consequence of things that we do, the suffering is there. Many times we think we can pray, we can do things stupidly, deliberately or disobey. And then we think we can pray, fast and pray. Your fast, you can go under this. Your fast and prayer will, will amount to nothing. Amen. Amen. The consequence, you will suffer it. What I'm saying is that God may forgive you somewhere along the line if it's from a genuine heart. But you will still suffer the consequence. Amen. Amen. Read the Bible. He never removed any the consequence of, of, of what people did. They suffered the consequence. Hallelujah. Amen. So don't think that you can deliberately do something, disobey God, and then you think you can use fasting and prayer to dribble God, right? It won't work. He doesn't work that way. So you have to understand that if God has given instruction not to do certain things, make sure you follow it to the letter. You obey it to the letter. Hallelujah. Amen. Otherwise, your fasting and prayer will not change God's mind. If he has to punish you, he will punish you. Because he has already said it. There's a kind of scripture. Don't put the glass at the edge of the table. And he said, no, let me, let, me, just, let, just, let me just try whether it will fall. What happened to the glass? When the glass falls, what happened? Okay. Oh, Lord, see, I'm sorry. Lord, forgive me. The Lord said, thank you. I heard you. You are forgiven. Do you get your glass back? Okay, that's the consequence. You've, you've what? Missed the glass. You won't get it back. Hallelujah. Amen. All right. You are commanded to live a decent life as a Christian. Hallelujah. Amen. Young man, until you get married, make sure you keep yourself pure. Young girl, until you get married, keep yourself pure. And you try to be smarter than God. Go ahead. Hallelujah. Amen. Go ahead. And mess up. Mess, mess around. You either get pregnancy. Which young man will run away from? Uh, don't go. <laughs> young girl, don't go and tell your boyfriend uh, that uh, I'm pregnant. That is the end. They will, you will see them again. They start fighting with you right there. That is the end of the relationship. But when you are doing it, didn't you uh, uh, re 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 realize the what? The end result. Hallelujah. Aha. Uh -huh. So now you got pregnant. Oh, Lord, have mercy. Forgive me for doing this. The Lord said, thank you. I hear you. You are forgiven for genuinely repenting. But the consequence is that you get a born one, B1, when you are not prepared for. Hallelujah. Amen. That's the consequence. You get it. You were not ready for it. You were not prepared for it. But the consequence is that you get what? Be one before your time. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. So when he did that, he got them to disobey God. There was a spiritual link that was disconnected. The connection between man and what? God was disconnected. Praise the Lord. Amen. It was spirit, spiritually there was something that was wrong. 
something went wrong. The relation between God and man. And that's the same thing that happens when we go against God's word. We don't live right. We disobey God's word. I tell you sometimes God will not trust us again. There are some things when you do. You may be forgiven, but you will not get to the level you were before. Amen. Amen. You will not get to the level you were before you fell into that sin. Never. God will not trust you again. Never. You can be praying in tongues, speaking in tongues, and do all the stuff and ever stuff. But where you were before, you disobey God, you will never get to that level. If it will happen at all, it will take you extra years. You know what that means. Praise the Lord. So as a believer, you, know, you have to understand that we, we are commanded to live a life of what? Obedience to our master. Every slave obeys their master. And we are slaves to Jesus. Hallelujah. We are slaves to the Holy Spirit. And every time we disobey him, I tell you, he becomes so sad. And he doesn't want to commit or uh, rely on us anymore. Hallelujah. I wish you might be. Sometimes well, if you lie to me and lie to me and lie to me, you get to a point when I don't trust you again. Amen. Amen. Yeah, if you lie to me once as a friend, right, and you lie to me just once, I don't say, Pastor, you're a pastor. Yeah, I'm a human being. <laughs> so before you deal with me, be careful. Don't do anything to stop me because some things, I will hate you. I will still love with you, but I won't trust you again. Amen. Amen. I will not trust you. You will not know. If you talk, I won't believe you again because you lie to me. Why do you have to lie to me? <laughs> Hallelujah. And if a human being I do that, what, what about God? God will not trust you again. If God depended upon you to do certain things, and now this is what you have done, he's going to what? Abandon you and look for another person. Hallelujah. Amen. Yes. Amen. So in verse 9, And the Lord God called unto Adam and said unto him, Where art thou? Because the spiritual link was broken, God was looking for Adam. And Adam said, oh, I heard you, your voice in the garden, and I ran away. Why do you run away, boy? Why do you run away? Your master is coming. It was always a joy and pleasure to have fellowship with God. Now, because you did the unthinkable, God is coming and you ran away. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Proverbs chapter 20, verse 1. It says that the wicked one ran when no one is pursuing him. But the righteous is as bold as the lion. Hallelujah. Uh -huh. When you were living right, you were always excited in being God, at God's presence. Hallelujah. When you were doing right, you were always excited going to church, fellowshipping. Now when we sinned, you started running away from even the church. Praise the Lord. So this is what Adam did. And I don't know where, where was Adam when the enemy, the enemy came in and, and trying to entice the wife. Where was he? Where was he? Hiding somewhere or what? Left the woman out sleeping somewhere. Too much sleeping. Lead to what? Trouble. Watch over them. You have been, the woman is what? Has been given to you. You are the man of the house. To guard and to guide and to help. Amen. Amen. Don't leave them. Don't abandon them. The enemy will come in. He knows. The Bible says that they are the weaker vessel. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. So they ran away because what? They broke God's law. God was looking for them and then they were run away. Adam up should have taken the seeking place. Hallelujah. Because he was a transgressor. He has sinned. He has fallen. So he should have gone Around the Garden of Eden, crying, my God, my God, where art thou? But it was God Almighty who left his throne to search through the dark bushes of the world. Looking for the rebel. And finding him in the, in the bushes of the garden. Instead of him going about, my God, what are you? Because you should have realized, hey, I've sinned against God. 
I have done wrong. I need to, I need to, to, to get God to be connected with him again. No, he was still running away. But God, in his mercy and love, was going around looking for Adam. What is my boy? What is my son? Well, God so love him. Amen. That even when we sin in our stupidity, in our foolishness, he doesn't abandon us. Hallelujah. His heart is so much loving toward us. And that's why he could have sacrificed only because of his son. He goes about looking for us. He goes about looking for us when we are what? Shine away from him, running away from him. His heart is always waiting, always waiting. Just like the, prodigal, uh, the father of the prodigal son. He never had rest when the son left home. That kind of love, fatherly love was there. And that's the same kind of love God what demonstrated toward us. Hallelujah. That when, when, when it breaks his heart, when he wants us to do what is right, when he wants to help us, and sometimes his sons are tired because of what? We, 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 we surrender ourselves to what? The devil, and then he can do nothing because of the free will he has given us. Amen. He cannot force issues, not until we come back willingly on our own say, Lord, have mercy. Otherwise, when we are uh, uh, entangled with, us, with Satan, God cannot force his way through to bring deliverance to us. Amen. Amen. Until we come out ourselves. And that's why when we are, sometimes people are doing something and they are praying about some issues, some prayers don't work. Because it don't work. On, not until the person involved has willingly allowed him or herself. Amen. Amen. Because of God's free will that he has given man. He will never interfere in anything. Amen. Amen. Because of what he has done. And that is why for him to even interfere in the affairs of men, he has to become like us. And that's why Jesus became a man. Because it will be illegal for God to interfere with man's affair because he has given him the free will, the right, everything. So for him to become like us and for him to relate with us to get his message across to us, he has to become like us. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. So God going about asking Adam, so I want to ask you, professed Christian child of God, where are you? Ask the next person again, where are you? Where are you, child of God? And I'm not asking you, where are you? In the sight of men. But I'm asking you, where are you? Where do you stand in the sight of God? Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Where are you? In God's spiritual calendar, where do you stand now? Some of us, you have, been, you have been a highway up there. So connected to God that nothing can pull us down again. But we've still been crawling. Crawling. Every little thing pushes, push, uh, push, puts us down. We've not grown to the level that we are supposed to. Hallelujah. And so we still remain baby Christians, shaking here and there, wobbling here and there. The least thing will be shaking like this. Where are you, child of God? Professed Christian. In the eyes of human beings, it's of very little significance or relevant where you stand. The way people see you is not important. Where do you stand in the sight of God? Where are you in the sight of God? That is what is very important. That's what God thinks, how God thinks of you. Can God say, oh, I know that daughter. I know that son, that child, that man. There is no one like him. He's righteous. He's truthful. He's honest. He stands for the truth. He doesn't compromise. Many of us believers today, we compromise a lot. But Jesus wasn't a compromiser. Praise the Lord. He stood for the truth. He stood for the right thing. Today, the least thing, oh, we're just yielding. We're giving to the system. <laughs> Amen. We're giving to the system because we're in this world. But the Bible says in the book of John 17, 16, that we are not of this world, even though we are in this world, we are not of the system. We are not part of it. So no situation 
should force us to be what? Part of it. To compromise our stand, our faith in the Lord. Hallelujah. We don't have to. We are here on a mission to effect change. To introduce the kingdom principle. To introduce what is in the kingdom. We talk of God's kingdom on this earth. Unfortunately, we got here what we're supposed to do to bring the kingdom here because Jesus came, he was always preaching about the kingdom of God. The kingdom of God. Repent for the kingdom of God is at hand. And that's what he did. And that's what he wants us to do. Unfortunately, we are not doing that. We let our gas down and then we are what? Flew with the words, the system of this world. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. In the book of Luke chapter 19. Luke chapter 19. And Jesus entered and passed through Jericho. And Jesus entered and passed through Jericho. Every time you read the Bible, you see Jesus and Jesus passed through Jericho. And Jesus was at the neighborhood of, neighborhood of Jericho. Jesus never stayed in Jericho. Praise the Lord. Jericho was a cursed city. So every time it was, either he was in the neighborhood, he was passing through, he never stayed in Jericho. Jericho, Jericho represents the system of the world. The world system is cursed. Amen. In, in, in Joshua chapter 6, verse 26, after... The city was, uh, 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 Rahab was delivered from the city of Jericho. Joshua cursed that city. Joshua 6, 26. And he said, the man that rebuilds the city will start the foundation with his firstborn. And then laid its gate with what? His lastborn. And this prophecy did happen. In 1 Kings chapter 16, verse 34, it happened. A man who got up, Wanted to build the city, that's what exactly happened. So you don't take God's word for granted. Praise the Lord. The words that come from the mouth of his prophet, they are very, very powerful and potent. If you joke with it, you find yourself in big trouble. Praise the Lord. So Jesus never stayed in Jericho because it was a cursed city, unlike Jerusalem, which was what? The city of God, the manifest presence of God. Hallelujah. And you, as a child of God, you don't have to stay in Jericho. You don't have to stay in, go with the system. You don't have to flow with the system. Praise the Lord. Be in God's presence. Hallelujah. Psalm number 16 verse 11 says, In the presence of in his presence there is what? Fullness of joy. At his right hand there are pleasures forevermore. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 So I want to ask, let, I want to say, let every prophetic sin ask yourself, ask yourself, where am I? Where am I? In the sight of God. Where are you? Where am I in the sight of God? When God is looking around. Looking for his children. Looking for those who, who are called by his name. Those who profess Christ. Where do I stand? Where am I? And you may ask yourself. Is my life ministering to the people? Am I being a light in, in this dark world? Is my life ministering to family members? To neighbors, friends? Co-workers, co job mates, it's my life ministering to them. Hallelujah. Amen. And even in your own family, do people know you to be the all out for Jesus? Your own family. How many of us, family members will say, if that's the way your, your Christianity is, then I'm not, going, I'm not going to be a Christian. I'm not following to your church. Because of what? Our attitude towards even our own relations at home. They will say that, no. Is that, the, is that, that's, is that, the, is that, is that how your Christianity is? Then I don't want to be part of it. Am I right? People say that to relations. Because with all the years or upon all the years of being going up and down and uh, shouting, singing, they've been making noise in the house there. But there is nothing to show that they are really what? Christian. They are really, uh, they have changed. Praise the Lord. So where are you in the sight of God? When your behavior, your attitude in the house is driving away people, preventing people from what? Coming to the light. Because you profess to be a light, 
But in a way, we are more of darkness than the light. Hallelujah. The word that comes out of our mouth is so horrible that some unbelievers will not even utter such words. And we have all this thing going in the assemblies of God's people, every garden. Wait until I'm back from church. And true to their word, they will come and continue the fight that they started before. Unfortunately, it was a Sunday. So they made sure that, hey, they have to go to church. You should have rather stayed home and then finished the fight. Rather than just deceiving yourself. Hallelujah. You should have stayed home and finished the fight. And see the conclusion of the matter. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. But coming to church and going back, what did you carry from the church to the house? When you come to the church, what did you get? Nothing. Nothing entered. The coconut. So you went back home to ready fight. And Satan was, Satan was applauding you. He's looking for such people. He's also making disciples every day. Unfortunately, unfortunately, he's recruiting people from the church as well. In fact, he has more disciples, more followers in the church than even in the outside world. Satan has more followers, more soldiers in the church than those outside. That's, that's the fact. You, you see many followers, church goers, right even outside the church. Here we are not many. As soon as we close, everybody is scattered. You get to some big churches. When they close, that's the time they are uh, socializing. And, this, and then that's when we see whether they really just uh, uh, came out of God's presence. They just finished worshiping with God or they worship with a different God. Because everything about what they are doing, even right inside the church is what? Not, there's nothing to write home about. Sometimes, I don't know. May God have mercy because you look as if uh, he laid down his life for us and uh, nothing is, is not being profitable to him or to us. Praise the Lord. And sometimes he gets, he gets angry at us. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. It's almost time. I want to cut it short. I very much hear, often, very often I hear people saying, Adam, the sins of Adam has brought mankind to uh, where we are, uh, has made mankind to be going through the suffering that we are going through, the suffering. Right, right, that's right. But that's wrong. Hallelujah. Well, we can say that we can blame Adam for everything going on. Yeah, Adam sinned because he was the first man created, so... A sin has brought us all of us to in the situation we find ourselves right now. Adam, Adam may be cruising in the presence of God. Hallelujah. And we still blame him. Just as sometimes we blame people for things that happened so many years ago. Yeah, what has happened has happened. Nothing can be, we can't do. What, what are we doing right now? Yesterday ended last night, right? What are you doing today? Yesterday is not relevant. Today, right now. What are you doing about today? That's the issue. So us blaming Adam for what happened uh, is not relevant. It's not important at all. What are we doing today? Is Adam causing us to do the thing that we do in the church? Then, then Christ coming is what? Coming to die for us is what? It's in vain. Hallelujah. If we still blame Adam for the things that happens to us, the things that are going on right now, then Christ coming to die to save us and we are singing every day, that is in vain. After God has purchased his blood for us and given us uh, grace and in, in blessings and prosperity, open doors, given us breakthroughs without sweat. Sometimes what we do is what? Horrible, disobey, rebellion. And then we blame what? Satan, 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 Satan. You are making me to suffer, Satan. You are the cause of this trouble. No. But if we obey God, God will always be there to fight our battles for us. Satan has no power. But because of our disobedient rebellion, it gives him what? Legal right most of the time to attack and to destroy. Because he came to steal, to kill, and to destroy. We give him the room. We give him the way to do that. But if we today, from today, if we will also realize and recognize that, hey, we are children called to walk in obedience. God Almighty 
will always be on our side. And there shall be victory. One second, I want to ask you, where are you? God is looking for you. If you are, are missing somewhere in the sight of God, you are missing by the things that you are doing. You are missing because you are living a life of rebellion, a life totally different from what God has introduced into the kingdom. I want you to what? Come back. Hallelujah. Call on him, he will answer you. God bless you. Amen.